Johnny Rowland. Welcome to Guns and Gears. We have a great show for you today. We have some 1911 action. We have a special piece on automatic transmissions. We also have a great segment on kit cars. Please remember to check our website every week, at least once a week, gunsandgears.tv. We're working on a classic toys, classic cars, motorcycles, whatever, a classic toys section on our website, so please check it. If you have something that you would like to sell through the program here, email me, johnny at gunsandgears.tv. Email me with the details. Leave a callback number because this is something we're working on. You know, as we travel around the country, we see some of the neatest things. We meet some of the nicest people. And occasionally, we make what we like to call a real find, something spectacular that we run into. Check this out. Friends, I was riding down the road and happened to look over in a garage in a construction zone, and this young man, Darrell Hurst, has a real find in this garage. Darrell, what's this car, sir? It's a 72 Challenger. A, an almost unobtainable, not many of them out there, 1972 Dodge Challenger. And except for a little rust on the roof, the car is in terrific shape. What engine's in it, Darrell? 344 barrel. Engine is in a really good condition, doesn't use any oil. No. How many miles? 104,000. 104,000. We think it's a 354 year. Now, your dad actually had this car right there. Yes. Friends, there are opportunities to come along, and you know what Mopar is going for these days. This is a great project car. It's going to be on our website, $11,495. And I think for anyone who knows what Mopar is going for now, we occasionally run across some real deals. This isn't anyone who is looking for one of the muscle cars. This would be a great uh, numbers actually match on this car. 344 barrel, torque flight, automatic transmission, uh, Flowmaster mufflers, MSD ignition, just a great opportunity and priced very fairly. Go to our website, gunsandgears.tv, gunsandgears.tv. Look on our classic car for sale uh, place there on the website. There's more Guns and Gears right after this. Do I need a lawyer? If you have to ask, you do. One of the most important reasons for consulting with an attorney is to decide whether you need representation or not. This can only be decided after meeting with experienced counsel. I'm Edward Mouton. I can help. Call me for you, your family, and your future. It's your future at stake. If you think you need a lawyer, call Edward Mouton or find us in the Metro book. Gun Ford Weekend is an organization developed by Ford enthusiasts to promote Ford drag racing and car show events. Fun Ford Weekend is dedicated to the growth and development of Ford performance. They provide an enjoyable and fun-filled atmosphere for racers and fans. Go to funfordevents.com and check the schedule to see which of the 14 events you can attend this year. Power, performance, reliability, confidence. The standards by which we expect our vehicles to perform by. ATS Performance makes those products that put the power to the ground. With our line of high performance torque converters and transmissions, you can feel confident about putting the power to the ground and getting to where you need. ATS Performance, paving the way for the diesels of today. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm standing here with Don Wexelman. He is a real estate developer, and, and this is some of the prettiest country in the entire world. And, Don, you have some, some property up here for sale. People who would like to have a summer home or year-round home, this would be a great place, wouldn't it? Yes, it is. Uh, very great. We got uh, 10 to 31 acres, priced from 79,000. It's actually affordable, and the property actually can be afforded. Fishing is great. We got some of the best fly fishing in the United States right here, with five miles of streams and three lakes to, for them to fish on. Red Feather Lakes is what about an hour from Fort Collins, about an hour from Laramie. Just a a great place. It's far enough away, but not too far. The winters are not that tough, and the summers are really pleasant, aren't they, Don? Yes, they are. The roads are will be maintained on a year-round basis. Anyone who wants to get to the mountains, this is not going to last. So please give them a call. 
Ladies and gentlemen, we're uh, here today in Hillsdale, Illinois, with Les Bayer. And I tell you, Les has a most unique reputation among not only customers, but among other custom pistol smiths. Les's products are ranked at the very top worldwide, whether it be a 1911 or an AR-15. Les's uh, guns are legendary for accuracy and reliability. The reason we have a uh, consistent quality is because we machine our own parts. We actually start with blocks of steel. This frame, this is right the way it came off the CNC machine. We uh, don't really have to depend on anybody except the steel suppliers, of course, because we buy our own raw steel and machine it from there. When you pick up a Les Bear custom pistol, this is what you're getting. All the hand fitting, all the hand polishing, like the mainspring housing, the beaver tail, all that stuff is blended all by hand. None of it's done on a machine. Every custom pistol we do is built to order. We made these special wooden racks so we can keep track of the parts. What we do is all these parts now are either oversized or undersized. From here on out, everything's hand fit. Right now, Zach, he's fitting all the mainspring housing, beaver tail, he roughs in all the ambies. He does all the fitting of those components on these frames and slides. He also does the firing pin stops, ejectors. That's what he's doing right now, he's hard fitting all these parts. John's fit and slide the frames. We use no lapping comb whatsoever. We found that if you use a lapping compound, it's impossible to totally remove it from the slider frame. So we draw file everything as we're fitting this. So right now, Josh is here, hand fitting all the barrels, the lugs, the bushing. Everything is hand done. Uh, we have what we call hard fit. So we use a lug cutter to cut the lugs to fit each individual barrel. Each slide stops hand fit. And what he's doing now is uh, the fitting to the slide stop pin. We're doing what we call the final assembly on this rack. The action job, the final fitting of the beaver tail, the ambi safety, the head space on the barrel, chamber dimension. All those very things are done last. Okay, right now he's cutting the feed ramp in the frame, the final fit. What we do is uh, hand cut every feed ramp to match the barrel. Jim's getting ready to do the final assembly. Just so happens this particular firearm was chrome plated on the bottom and bear coat on the top end. Bear coat is a DuPont S finish. It's a very durable finish, very rust preventative. John is prepping all our frames and slides right now on the small parts. We're getting ready to, just so happens, this is a blue rack. So we will be prepping these right now for our bluing run, which we'll probably do uh, in the next few days. On function testing, these guns actually get three chances, or three chances on the range for function firing, huh? Right. What we do is uh, we brought these up. Our two facilities are only about a half a mile apart. So we brought these up here. We're going to put approximately five magazines through each gun, take them back to the pistol shop, take them apart, check them over. Then we do that three times. We bring them back up here three times for a total of a, between 125 and 150 rounds. For more information, you can always look at our website at lessbear.com where you can phone at 309-658-2716 and we can get you all the information you request. If you want the absolute best 1911 that money can buy, nobody is building a better and more reliable and more accurate across the board 1911 than Les Bear. Guns and Gears will be back right after this. How would you like to have 44 Magnum performance on your 1911 style pistol? You can with our 460 Rolling Pistol Kit, available on our website at gunsandgears.tv.
With our 460 pistol kit, you can shoot the super powerful 460 rolling shell as well as the standard 45 ACP in the same gun. With our 460 pistol kit, you can shoot the super powerful 460 rolling shell as well as the standard 45 ACP in the same gun. The easily installed kit includes a new custom compensated barrel, custom springs, and a full length recoil guide. Only $275 plus shipping and handling. Order your conversion kit at GunsAndGears.tv. <laughs> For solid shooting support, Choke Machine and Tools presents the Choke Rifle Stabilizer. Cut your offhand group in half. There's a reason many of the finest gun makers choose Choate Machine and Tool Stocks as standard equipment for their guns. Choate has an unbeatable combination of quality and value. To order, call toll free 1-800-972-6390 or go to RifleStock.com for Choate's full product line. Attention 1911 and AR type rifle fans, if you want the ultimate in quality, reliability and accuracy, call Les Bear Custom and order the guns America's top shooting professionals prefer. All Les Bear guns are hand fitted and hand finished for the maximum in precision and performance. Also they offer a full line of custom 1911 and AR rifle parts. Call 309-658-2716, catalog only $2 or go to lesbear.com. Georgia Arms wants to be your ammo company. They feature a full line of best quality handgun and rifle ammo delivered right to your door at the lowest price as possible. Whether you have a 9mm or a 357 Magnum or a 454 Casula, one of the great 460 rolling guns, they've got your ammo. Maybe you want cowboy action shells or precision plus long range hunting ammo with Nostler Acubon bullets. Maybe you want components to load your own ammo. Well, call them to order 1-800-624-6861 or go online at georgia-arms.com. Hi, and welcome to the Taj Garage. This is the home of the National Kit Car Club and Kit Car Builder Magazine. I'm Jim Youngs, the editor of Kit Car Builder Magazine and the director of the club. When we say kit cars or specialty cars, they're just that. Either, either cars that come in a kit or cars that you buy the components elsewhere and put them together in your own home. Uh, for instance, we're building this Porsche RSK Spider from 1957. It's a replica. There were only 18 of the original cars built and that's one reason for building a kit car. They're cars that uh, are unobtainable as far as price goes and this car you can probably build it for about $25,000 with a healthy engine. This uh, RSK Porsche kit is from Thunder Ranch in uh, El Cajon, California and it's pretty much based on Volkswagen and, uh, and early Porsche components. For instance, we're using uh, early model Carmen Ghia disc brakes just because disc brakes are better than, uh, than the stock uh, drum brakes that would come with the car. It uses a front VW beam with uh, trailing arms and uh, all the mechanical components we've, uh, we've converted. Instead of using old components, we're using brand new aftermarket par parts and pieces. As you can see, we're using a, a 911 Porsche style wheel that's been uh, highly polished. They're beautiful wheels and, uh, and shod them with uh, Falcon uh, directional tires. The interior of the RSK Spider is pretty small as you can see. Uh, this, this car is built on a uh, proprietary frame much like the original uh, Porsche 550 Spider, which uh, predated this particular car. By the way, our highly paid assistant here, Nick Mavrotheris, is a neighbor of mine and sometimes proofreader in the magazine, perfectly holding the uh, engine cover of the RSK up. We use a, uh, a uh, Rancho transmission. This is called a Super Street transmission that's had uh, a lot of internal beefed up gears, welded gears, and a flipped ring and pinion gear so that it can be used in a uh, mid-engine configuration as we're using here. This uh, style of a transmission is uh, VW based, of course, and uh, four bolts hold that little motor onto the uh, transmission with ease. Uh, it uses a lot of sand rail style parts because mid-engines are pretty popular in sand rails and sand cars, dune buggies and that sort of thing. We've got a hydraulic clutch, aftermarket Bosch uh, starter and solenoid, and a uh, buggy style, uh, dune buggy style uh, transmission shifter. This is the monster engine that's going to power our little RSK. Keep in mind that the car only weighs about 1,100 pounds when it's finished and full of gas and me in it. Um, this is a VW-based engine. It is a board and stroked Volkswagen Type 1 motor. 
uh, air cooled flat four they call them it's been bored to uh, 2.1 liters 2110 cc our engine is uh, fit with a Weber 48 millimeter carburetor and a Garrett turbocharger it's a pull through turbocharger instead of a blow through where the uh, turbo would blow air through the carburetor this pulls it through the carburetor it's more efficient and more powerful uh, it's got a custom header system on it and uh, we're using a uh, Thunder Ranch 911 style Porsche fan shroud and fan uh, that's much better for the cooling and keep that turbocharger nice and cool. To keep this little monster cool, we've added a Thunder Ranch 911 style Porsche fan shroud and fan and a big, huge, monstrous oil sump to keep, uh, to keep that turbo fed with oil and lubricated and to keep the whole engine cool. The bottom line on this little motor is that it's rated at about 300 horsepower and with an 1100 pound car, we're in for some real serious fun. We've gathered three uh, kind of typical examples of the kit car, specialty car world. On my left is a uh, rebody, we call it, and it's uh, body component panels that fit on a production car. In this case, it's an S10. This car is called a Rodster, and the kit is built in El Segundo, California. To my right is uh, the car I wanted in high school. It's a completely reproduction 1932 Ford High Boy Roadster. They're, it's all Ford. We call it the Fordomatic. It's got some really trick uh, suspension components and a Mustang engine. On my far right is a car owned by Nick Mavertheris, a neighbor of mine. It's a Factory 5 Racing Cobra Daytona Coupe replica uh, based on the, uh, on the legendary car that won Le Mans back in the 60s. Uh, it too uh, wears a Mustang motor and it's uh, a blast to drive. This is a Rodster sedan delivery built by uh, Caroselli Design in El Segundo, California. We call this a rebody because it, uh, what all you do is add uh, fiberglass panels to the uh, stock uh, S10 Blazer in this case or uh, any other kind of uh, production vehicle. This one features a 40 Ford grille but it's an original design. Uh, still uses the steel doors. In fact, the kit uh, basically consists of the whole front clip, quarter panels, rocker panels, and rear fender flares. Uh, this car was painted by Gordon Levy in uh, Tempe, Arizona, and it's got uh, spectacular ghost flames without any pinstriping, which is kind of hard to do. We also, uh, after we built this car, we did a complete uh, redo of the interior, and all it is is pretty much stock with just new materials. Uh, to match the exterior colors. We also uh, shaved the door handles so it uses a remote uh, popper that uh, that will open the door and we also shaved the uh, tail lights in the, in the rear quarter panels and uh, used a roll pan rear bumper with uh, LED lights. This is a reproduction 1932 Ford Street Rod uh, High Boy Roadster. It's technically not a kit car. We kind of call it the 1-800 street rod because you can uh, literally pick up the phone and order every single part on this car. There are no old parts on this car. It's a fiberglass reproduction body built by Lone Star in Texas. And uh, the chassis is a reproduction 1932 Ford uh, rails and uh, has some updated cross members and whatnot from Cornhuskers in Nebraska. It features uh, independent front suspension which is kind of different for a car like this. There's lots of 32 Ford uh, roadsters out there and this one's just a little bit different. Uh, it has some uh, pretty startling airbrush work on the side of the car. Uh, we we chose that based on uh, 1956 Ford Crown Victoria just to give it a little bit of a wink factor and uh, it gets lots of attention and then we uh, themed it the ford matic because all the pieces on this car on the drivetrain are Ford. It uses a uh, 94 style crate motor from Ford. It's a 302 small block with aluminum heads and it's good for about 345 horsepower. It's got lots of uh, shiny stuff all over the engine from Zoops and uh, like I say everything on it is, uh, is reproduction. We've taken the hood off so you can see this Ford uh, crate motor from Ford Racing Products. It's a uh, 302 small block rated at about 345 horsepower. This one has aluminum heads and, uh, and a big air intake. It also wears the stock 5 liter Cobra Mustang uh, plenum and uh, intake system. The uh, interior of this car is a bit of a mix of custom upholstery and, uh, and traditional style dashboard. It features uh, classic instruments gauges, actually autometer gauges. It's got a uh, in-tank fuel pump in the uh, 32 Ford style tanks, Inc. 
uh, gas tank that I painted myself. Pretty proud of that. It, it also features uh, 49 Ford taillights with traditional blue dot centers to them. I run all steel wheels from uh, Stockton Wheel in California, and they're shod with uh, Cobra rubber. This is a Cobra Daytona Coupe replica built by Factory 5 Racing. That's the largest kit car company in the United States. Their premier product, of course, is the Cobra Roadster, uh, of which they probably sell over 500 a year. Uh, the beauty of this car and their, and their Roadster is that it's based on a single donor Mustang. That's a 5.0 Mustang. And uh, from that, you use the suspension, engine, rear end, uh, most of the drivetrain components, steering, etc., etc. Uh, a fairly easy kit car to build. This one, the coupe is a little bit more difficult, particularly this one because it's got uh, in, independent uh, rear suspension. Unlike a lot of kit cars around, this Daytona coupe is a daily driver almost. Uh, its owner took about a year and, well, 14 months to build the car, and uh, he drives it radically. By the way, this is my car. <laughs> this is it over a 14 month period. Uh, and it's been over half the United States. It is a daily driver. It's not a trailer queen. This is, that's Nick Mavertheris. He's my neighbor here in uh, Bell Mountain Ranch. This Daytona is actually a little bit practical, even though it's a small car. Put your luggage in there. This car has even had snow skis in there. One of the neat things about a Daytona Coupe is that when you lift this hood, you got lots of access to that Mustang motor. Nick's Daytona is powered by a salvage uh, 5 Mustang motor, 1995. Uh, he retained the air conditioning on it and all the bells and whistles that you can uh, that you can possibly have. As you can see, the kit car hobby is a is a fun one, and the diversity is certainly there. There's a lot of kit cars. These are only three of the ones that uh, we could gather today. Uh, if you're interested in getting started in this hobby, a good place to start, I think, is Kit Car Builder Magazine and the National Kit Car Club. You can reach us toll-free at 866-KITCAR1 or look for us on the web at www.kitcarclub.com. Stay tuned for more Guns and Gears. Hi, this is Matt with ATS Diesel Performance. Good to see everybody again. We've got some quick notes on the automatic transmission in today's diesel for you today. Uh, this is the 47RE transmission that is in the Dodge. Uh, basically what we're focusing on is the different elements inside the transmission. We have the torque converter up in the front of the transmission. This actually transfers power from the motor at motor rotation through the torque converter to the input shaft which drives your gear sections inside the transmission. In here you have the clutch packs, you have the bands that clamp down on the gear sections, you have your planetaries which rotate inside here, and you have your overdrive section and the valve body underneath which delivers your fluid. What we're focusing on is the torque converter which is this unit up front. This houses the fluid coupling section, which starts the truck out, gets the truck moving, and then we switch over to the lockup section, or the clutch system in here, which is your one-to-one -one power transfer. Most of us don't realize with the automatic transmission just how much power transfer, how much power loss we have through the transmission and especially through the torque converter. That's what ATS Diesel is all about, is designing these products so that we can make everything more positive, give you more torque multiplication, better efficiency, build the torque converter so that you don't have slippage with the lockup section and get more of your power to the ground. What we've got here is two stators out of the fluid coupling half of the torque converter. We've got the stock stator and we've got the ATS diesel pulse stator. Basically with the stator, this piece is sitting in between the turbine and impeller inside the torque converter and as the fluid coupling is generated, the stator redirects fluid to the other side of the converter and generates the force that it takes to actually move the vehicle forward. With a stock stator, you have a little bit too high of a stall, and you don't have a lot of torque multiplication, but we like to call that a mushy setup on the stator. We're going to our billet cut pulse stator with the mixed flow veins, and what this does is basically increase your torque multiplication, and it also drops the stall down to where your peak torque and power is. We've got the stock lockup section and cover from the stock torque converter. What we're looking at here is the piston, which is normally turned 180, sitting down inside the cover here. You have your pieces are made out of a stamped steel with the welded on bolt hole covers. 
your clutch system in here is a single clutch ring that is bonded to this piston. That piston actually gets applied and has to grab the metal cover. You can see where this one has actually worn completely off, gone metal to metal, just like you would with brakes on your tires. Um, and what we're changing in here when we go to our converter is actually going to billet components, getting away from the stamped steel. So you have a lot tougher system, no welded on bolt hole covers. We actually have a triple clutch pack here for the lockup. With the stock and torque converter, we usually have our clutch friction bonded to the stamped steel piston here. We actually use billet pieces on the ATS converter. We have both the piston is cut out of a billet piece of metal, which is normally the stamped steel. Cover as well is also the billet with the solid bolt hole system. Doesn't have the welded on bolt hole covers. The clutch pack is actually our triple clutch pack, which is where the name triple lock comes from. Each of these clutches have tabs that actually lock into both the piston and the cover. The clutch system in the ATS converter actually uses a Kevlar paper composite material which gives you the toughness, helps this clutch material last longer. You don't end up with the wear as soon as you would with the stock clutch surface. With the triple lock system, there is a substantial amount of power difference transferred to the wheel versus the stock torque converter. It's both in efficiency, number-wise, and seat of the pants difference. This is one way to get the power to the ground. Thanks for joining us again here at ATS Diesel Performance in Arvada, Colorado.